Well, good morning. And it is morning for me. It's it's Sunday morning. And uh, welcome to another edition of The Bare Bones. So today I'm going to be talking about sword infantry. And uh, how this come about is sort of an extension of my last uh, Men at Arms Paladins comparison video. Uh, because in that video I mentioned two styles of play that I do. And it's essentially your heavy infantry in it to win it style and your foot cavalry style. And so this video is going to take that and expand it out to all the units that I feel fit into these categories. And I'm going to give you some video examples. Um, so this particular video is going to be fairly data heavy. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to, I've actually gone into all the cards and I've pulled out all the pertinent information. I'm going to lay it out before you, you know, as my proof of what I think the, the unit fits into and it's not just what i think the unit fits into too it's like it's obvious that the developers added in these skills strictly for that reason right they, they obviously made units that would hold up better in the melee and units that hold up better in the charge and and there's a lot of um uh, there's a lot of abilities both passive and active and and other little things that you can definitely point to and say yeah that's that causes this video that causes this unit to to be, uh, you know, in a twin or, or foot calve or both. And usually if they're both, they do one well and one not so well, but they can do both. So we'll start with the heavy infantry. But before we do that, let's uh, do my standard. Let's give you some timestamps. So if you want to skip ahead to something that you'd rather see, you can do so. So here are some timestamps and then we'll get right on into it. Okay, so as I stated, there's uh, two types of infantry and we're gonna look at heavy infantry first. And then we're going to look at the foot cat infantry. So I'm just going to lay out um, some traits of what I think heavy infantry and the the, the foot cav style has. So, so I want to point out that the following traits are, are just that. They might have one or two of them. They might have all of them. Though well, that's doubtful. And they might have traits that at first glance uh, may not seem to be um, universal. And, and they're, not, they're not going to be. For example... What I, a lot of what I consider heavy infantry, uh, what makes a heavy infantry unit is the slow movement speed. But there's also uh, infantry like the Maidens that have an actually a quick movement speed. And I consider the Maidens into the in it to win it thing. And, and the reason uh, I, I say that is because they do have the ability to stay stuck in. And so another thing that I think makes heavy infantry is they have wider formations. So they're harder to maneuver, but not all of them have wider formation. So you see what I mean? This is sort of like a, 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 a an encompassing thing, right? So generally they have mediocre damage, right? And, and I'll show you why I say that in a second. They usually have high defenses, although not always. Uh, they have passive abilities that encourage the extended melee, and they could have a passive ability that makes it undesirable or, or unable to get out of combat, right? So what abilities am I talking about? Well, let's take a look at that. Okay, so here are some of the passive and active abilities I've pulled out of the, the unit cards. So, Staunch Defenders, so that reduces damage when they're in the melee. Stand Firm, this is a maiden ability, less damage from cav charges while wielding spears. Heavy Armor and Very Heavy Armor, so this tends to make them move slower. And a Self-Heal ability, uh, which is, of course, Paladins and, and uh, Men at Arms, the defensive build. Uh, Frenzy, the unit becomes uncontrollable, so they are unable to get out of combat whether you want them to or not. Uh, by the book, that's a gray-haired uh, ability, so it increases damage and health regen when they get below a certain percentage. Uh, melee fighters, damage increased in the melee. And um, in the case of the Paladins, I haven't put this in here, but of course the Paladins have that passive ability that gives them 20% damage taken if they're being hit from the rear. So it becomes very hard to, to pull your Paladins out. And I'm going to show you an example of this. Uh, when you're in the in the melee, because if you do so, you're going to take severe damage. So what I'm basically saying is that an in it to win it unit can be a unit that's designed to be, or it can be a unit uh, that if you try to pull them out, something bad will happen to them, right? So, um, and with that, I've come up with this definition of what a heavy infantry or stuck in in it to win it unit is. So an in it to win it heavy infantry unit is a melee unit that are usually slower speed, tend to have high defensive, high health values, 
passive abilities that increase damage in the melee or other passive active survival traits and or passive weaknesses that make it difficult or unwise to try to break contact. So um, with that, I've put together a, a list of what I think a heavy in it to win it unit is. And um, now this, as you can see, it's a bit, uh, it's a bit of a data dump here, uh, but I'm going to go through a couple of units on it. And I'm going to show you what I'm talking about, but uh, I'm not going to dwell on this slide because it is, you know, it's a lot. It's a TLDR for sure. Uh, now, if you want to pause it and just check all the comparisons, that's that's fantastic. Uh, but we're going to move on. But one thing I, you should know about this particular slide uh, is that the doctrines matter, right? So I found, for example, that when I when I took the, the Palace Guard defensive, let's say it's 55 right now, uh, like the attack rating is 55, uh, when I added a, a charge cooldown doctrine to lower their charge cooldown, it actually went up to 64. So doctrines actually affect the in-game ratings. So let's take a look at, at uh, what I'm also what I'm talking about here. And, and that is the fact that I don't own a couple of these units or have them leveled very well. Like the Saladars, for example, I don't own them. I've put them on this list after going through what data I could access. And uh, from looking at their unit tree, I, I suspect that they would be in the heavy infantry uh, line. Also, my Berserkers are only level 11. Uh, and my Paladins and Men at Arms have the complete 100,000 plus honor in the unit tree. So that's one thing that we can look at right away. Is you'll notice that the... Uh, the Paladins and the Men at Arms defensive builds, uh, they both have high armor values and they're pretty much on par with the Palace and Guards defensive uh, um, values, you know, like 750 for the Palace Guard defensive versus 777 for the Paladins, although the Men at Arms are up at 953. But those numbers for the Palace Guards are without any points in the unit tree. So you can see right now how the Palace Guards defensive line would get a, a bit of a boost in, in their defenses if you were to put points into the unit tree. Now, another thing is on the far right, you're gonna see the foot cav, and I have like, no, yes, no, not recommended, yes, no, 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 yes, no, right? And, and that's basically me saying that they can also do a bit of the foot cav ability, right? Um, so now if you're looking at the attack rating, again, that is done specifically uh, by the game. So you notice that the Palace Guard's attacking build has 120 uh, and they've got like a, a 91 defense. And so you can see how, you know, a lot of times they do have mediocre damage, but there is the odd case where uh, they don't. Now, why is the Palace Guard's attacking build in here? And that is directly representative of its movement speed and its formations. Uh, I can... I can I've tried to use them as foot cavalry and I get wrecked every time. Uh, because if you look, their speed is 32, like the rating, and they their formation is just too wide. Um, and so whenever I try to, to move them quickly and get them around a corner and, and it hits somebody in the butt, uh, half the unit is strung out and I can't get to it. Uh, so they're in this in it to win it uh, category strictly because they just, they have no choice. If you get them in the battle, you can't get them out. Right, like there's no way. Now the paladins are here, even though, in my opinion, to be foot cav you need a minimum of a 44 speed. Well, you notice that the the Gary Hid Garrison has 47, and the paladins and the men at arms have 44. So they can do foot cav, right? So you notice the gray haired Garrison. This is the immortal uh, line, right? So they've got with the, the with the um, doctrines I have, they have over 14,000 health. They have like a 69 attack and an 81 defense, but again, they've got abilities, um, and I should have pulled them out and I forgot, but they have abilities that allow them to stand firm uh, and, and not be knocked down and things like that when they're in it to win it, right? But they also have 47 speed, so they so even now, the Grey Hair Garrison, even though they can get stuck in, uh, they can get out too, right? Because they have that higher speed. So now the Paladins, you'll notice that I have it as not recommended. And that's strictly because of the fact that when you turn them around, they get dinged in the butt right like they take all that extra damage um now the maidens they're 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 strictly my go-to unit uh i love this unit they, they can even down the sword line where i am they have high defense high attack high you know me, medium to high uh um defenses sorry and and 
high speed. They're 56, right? They actually keep up with my horse. So the Maidens is an excellent unit for that regard, but of course we all know that gold area units cost a bit of points, right? So, um, you know, that's that's uh, something you've got to decide. You'll also notice that there is no blue units on this slide because blue units just don't have the health requirement. And you'll notice they're all at least 10,000 uh, health requirements to stay in it to win it. Now the Reapers, you can see they do an insane amount of damage uh, and they have high defense, but their speed is 40, right? So they just don't have the capability to get out. And they, and you'll also notice they have, um, you know, like slashing defenses uh, over a thousand. So the Reapers are in it to win it, not because, um, you know, they're, they're not a high damage unit, but because they simply don't have the capability of getting out. So what we're gonna look at next is um, actual play video. And uh, here are some timestamps in case you want to look at a particular unit, because this is a long video. It's, I'm actually split it into two. There's going to be a, a sequel to this as well. Um, so as you can see, I've got like uh, Palace Guard, Greyhead Garrisons, Paladins, and I do have a little one little Iron Reaper clip. Um, so m this is a tactics video. This is a, a, a theory video. So what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you my losses as well as my successes right a lot of uh of uh, like content creators will go through and they'll they'll uh show you like this is the best game ever i've got 200 kills kind of thing but for my purposes this is a a video of 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 tactics so i want to show you how i screw up as well as how i succeed right and i think that's important um so you recognize where things is now, that being said, I've never been very good with the Palace Guard. I just can't seem to get it. So we're going to, I'm going to show you my loss with the Palace Guards, and I'm going to show you where I think I started to do good. Uh, and then we're going to slide into the uh, the Greyhaired Garrison, where again, I can show you some some good portions and some uh, b bad portions of how I played them. And then, of course, my best unit, which is the the, the Paladins and the, and the, and the Men-at-Arms style. And that's because even even when I'm playing um, Paladins, which I know are a stuck in unit, they're in it to an it unit, I play them like their foot calf up until point of contact, right? So I actually go around, I try to get the flank, and then when I hit, when I get in, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm staying in, right? And I'm going to show you two examples where I don't do that and I get wrecked because of it. So um, without any further ado, I guess, let's take a look here, starting with the Palace Guard. So this is the Palace Guard attack build. Now, I'm going to get like a, a, a one to one kill ratio with this. But what I, I don't like it is again is is I don't have the formation uh, the formation choices that I do with other units, right? So I get stuck in, and I know I have to get stuck in. So here I am getting stuck in, and I'm using um, the the formation keys to kind of like move them around as if they had cover me but they don't and uh you can see they're they're super slow and i go and i take on this this men at arms unit and i'm doing all right like i'm up to 30 kills mind you the first unit was an iron cap but what i try to do is is i try to to protect this this these guys' flanks and i try to put my um palace guard on the flank there if they had a smaller formation, they would have been able to fit right inside that that uh, that uh, wall, but they can't. So they basically died. They, I got stuck in and they died. And I, I don't like how they died. And I, I put the Paladins in here because I want to show you something very similar. So it's the same map. I went out, grabbed the Paladins, came back, and notice how maneuverable and quick they are. So I could actually literally get in behind the fight, get in behind the fight, and charge in the back right now this hero kind of interrupts half the charge but they do get in uh and of course these cavalry come in and, and teach me the error of my ways but the whole point of this was to, to to show that in the same area you know the the paladins have a bit more movability now if you watch this one and i'm in uh, uh westwood i believe if you if you watch this one you can see how I'm, I'm trying to maneuver them as if they're they're paladins, right? And they're they're pretty slow. I go in for the charge. I don't even notice that I'm already getting wrecked from behind, right? I got two heroes coming in, and I just don't succeed. You know, I'm trying to push them forward. They're they're really slow. They're like 32 on their range, and I just can't do it. 
So if, if you if you play these guys regularly, if you've got a strategy that works, that'd be great uh, if you want to let me know, because I just can't seem to get the Minotaur's attack build to really function well. Now I do a little better with their defensive builds, right? And here's here's an example of a defensive build that I do a little bit better with. And I, now I'm going to try and play them as as almost like a, a, a wall, right? Um, not as bad as I did with the uh, my Paladin video where I was actively trying to use that shield formation because of the bonuses. This time I'm going to try and do a little bit of both. So I, I know I can't flank too well, so I come in and I try to set up first. Now look how slow they're moving, right? It they just filter in and it takes them forever to get there. Like, my playstyle is just not like this. If, this, if these were Paladins, I'd already be in place. So, so I, 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 I kind of brace. And, it, and they kind of they kind of handle it. They, they just sit there and they take the damage. Now, I'm giving them a heal, but I mean, it's, it's still it's a, it's a slow-acting heal. But they are taking the damage. And they're getting kills. And look at the health. They're not really falling down. I'm in the middle of this swarm of... of uh, you know, men-at-arms and, and, and other units, and I got 34 kills, and I'm very little health is, is gone. So I'm like, well, this is pretty good. Let's try charge. So I, I, I go into the crouch first, and charge. And I do this because I get a, you get that bonus coming out, right? And I, I pop my nightly vows, they go in quick. And again, I'm, I'm in it to win it. I'm, I'm stuck in. And, I, and I'm using my formations to push me around, right? But to push the other units around. And I don't lose a lot of uh, health there. So I think I think this is the way you kind of got to play them. You got to play them aggressively, but you're you're the you're the anvil. Like if I had a friend that was playing uh, paladins or men at arms or something, as I go in, I would I would just sort of stick them and then get them get them through. Uh, or sorry, stick them and allow the, the paladins to to uh, to counter. So here's another example. Uh, I charge in. Of course, they're all dead by the time I get in there. But um, they're going to go up against another uh, palace guard unit in a couple of seconds. Here we go. Now I come over here, and I now this guy must be an attack because he doesn't have the. Uh, he doesn't seem to use that, that that tight formation, so he charges, and again the palace guard defense they just they just take it right. So I, I adjust their formation a little bit, but I'm going one for one with this guy, one on one with this guy, and I, he's got to be an attack build, right? And my guys are winning, and they actually do win the fight. So I think that's how you want to play them. They're, they're basically an anvil to somebody else's hammer. If you have a friend that could like flank around and hit these guys in the back, you know they would have, you know, they would. Well, I took them out anyway, but they would have taken it out. But even though I, I don't do too badly with the kills, I don't. They don't seem to get as many kills as as uh, a paladin would. Now, here is the Paladins. No, the Greyhair Garrison, sorry. Here's a Greyhair Garrison. And this is a funny... Greyhair Garrisons are kind of funny because you can screw up with Greyhair Garrisons and still kind of succeed. So this is, is uh, a combination loss and, and good play, I guess, is the only way to describe it. I'm trying to flank these guys, and they decide they don't want to be flanked, so they back off. I charge anyway. And that player knocks me down. But you'll notice, I can back out, right? I don't really like being there, so I just sort of hold in the formation for a bit. And I kind of back out. Now, one of the, the problems with these guys is just like uh, Palace Guard attack and have too, too wide of a formation, these guys can at times have too narrow of a formation. So they're, they're much better in the cities. But I, I kind of charged in there. I kind of made that mistake, and I, I was able to back out. Now they have the speed. I caught, probably could turn around and ran out, but I, I, uh, I knew I had guys behind me, so I just sort of backed out. And then these terrorists come to the left. Now I think they're to charge me, but they don't. They go to the other guy. So I'm like, oh, okay. I better move around. So I, I move over to the right, and I put a charge in myself. And again, this is this is that wonderful dual 
play style that the maidens have. But again, you'll notice I'm now surrounded, and I gotta keep changing my f my facing. And this becomes prevalent in these these wide open areas, right? The, the, um, I, I eventually get surrounded too much, and the, the the narrow formations just don't don't cut it. But again, this is the immortal garrison. So this these guys have fourteen thousand health. So I am able to push them and push them and push them, right? So again, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to push in. And now I'm stuck in. And again, I have to be very cognizant of where I'm facing. Now remember, these, these, uh, these condies do excellent damage. They do do excellent damage. But again, the... The palace guard kind of succeed. Like, well, they do succeed. They, 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 they definitely win. But I'm saying it kind of because I keep putting them into these situations where they're fully surrounded, and, and somehow I keep not dying fully, right? So I go back to heal. And this is where, with this, uh, these garrisons is coming up here is where I really screw the pooch. So I'm doing okay up up to this point. But I'm about to, to really crack it, right? So I move over here because I'm just trying to get out of the archer's range. I thought I would charge them, but they're gone. So I decide, well, you know what? Fuck it, I'm going to take out these, uh, these archers. I went to my left, so I look all right. Oh, but what this? Iron caps. And again, I'm surrounded. And I still have to keep shifting my facing. So I guess, so you can see they're pretty tough. But I charge, and even with uh, Nightly Vows, they get out of the way in time. And, and that, that to me, um, was my mistake. I, I should have kept closing before I charged if I was going to do that. And then this Nodachi just tears me apart. Because I'm trying to trying to face him, and I just don't have enough of the unit left. So even so I guess you could say, even though I'm failing, they're kind of failing up, if you know what I mean. <laughs> they're kind of failing up. So here is another example of, of um, combination of... of uh, in it to win it and foot cav. I got two two player kills right there, three player kills right there. So they're pretty good when you've got you know a narrow corridor to lock down, right? And that combination of being able to, able to uh, you know lock down a spot and charge out of it, that's really good. And again, I've got no cover me, so I'm trying to put my unit on top of them uh, so that they he he'll get killed by the unit. So I charge into a flank shot, and I beat these guys. But again, you're going to see a, a pretty good loss coming up here. And I, I always try to go back to a, um, a health point whenever I can and get heals, even though I can heal. But you can still see I have a chunk of the unit. So now I'm, I'm again, uh, going to try and get a flank, flank attack. And I like their speed. They're actually faster than uh, Meta Arms and Paladins. So this is where I can use them as foot guard, or foot cav. And that narrow formation allows me to uh, kind of peek around the corner. Although, like I said, it... it in, in in open in open country fight it, it is kind of because they don't have any wide formation they do get it's really hard to not get flanked so I take these these archers out and so what 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 I do is I, I keep as you can see I keep putting the formation forward so that they'll just advance and and and, and uh, advance into them and, and, and kill them this is really something that um, you must do with paladins a lot and and you'll see that. 
This is where I get a loss. I don't see how uh, the situation is changing. I'm, as you can see, I'm still playing like I'm foot cab, though. I'm, I'm holding back and waiting for a charge opportunity. And, oh, look at that. Look at that big cloud of red. And this is where I should have pulled out. I should have left. Instead, I stick around. So, but I do get some player kills out of it. One. I think there's two. Second one coming up here. Okay, and two. And I get completely surrounded. And I, I can't just turn my formation the way I need to. So I cut my losses and I run. Now here is where I do everything right. Right up until they die, but I do everything right. And and they really do work as an init to win it unit in a narrow quarter. And actu actually you'll find, uh, although I don't do it in this video, you'll find that if you're attacking and you want to push down that staircase and just keep hitting number one, one, they'll push a little bit, one, they'll push a little. I've forced units down staircases with this. Uh, but this is this is where I'm going to show you how you you basically can use it as a as a as a really good defensive stuck in unit. And and you can see like as soon as they hit that formation, it's very hard to, to push them out. And I'm going to push right up to the to the to the siege tower here. And I'm going to get out. And I do that because I know there's going to be a nuke coming soon. Because I know I would. So I get out and I'm waiting for the nuke. I know it's coming. And there it is. See, I knew. Like, you can only stand on a siege tower for so long. you got a couple of seconds before someone decides they're going to nuke it. And again, I just push my way in. I just push my way into this this uh, this um, silver era shield wall. This is one of my favorite maps to, to use the, the Greyhead Garrison in a defensive role because I can just sit on this on this point. Now here comes some uh, some condies, and again they have really good like you're going to see in the, in the, in the subsequent foot cap video. Their their attack um, damage is right up there with with, with uh, you know, purple gold air units, and you're going to see that in the next video that they're they have amazing damage output capability. Assuming you use them right, right? They're just going to wander into my 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 unit, and they're going to get crushed. And then I charge the finish. And then I, this guy, I didn't notice this guy was behind me, but he marches through. <laughs> But again, I, I love the fact that they have that high speed because I can I can I can flex it a little bit, uh, hit what needs to be hit, and then come right back in, right? So they're in it to win it unit with with a with a high movement uh, flexibility, right? So it's it's really good. I can keep playing both sides at this point. And you can see I haven't really lost uh, a, a lot of damage. I haven't really lost anybody, you know. And that's one of the good things about being a longsword when you do this is, is um, you can heal. Your charge is faster. And your clash of shields can, can help you either break contact or get into contact. Now this is pretty good. I use my clash of shields to to give my uh, to give my my garrison a little bit more um, stand to it, and then this these guys march through. And somehow, oh, somehow they get they don't get all the way there because they're still fighting the, the iron reapers. But again, I just I just use that number one key and I throw a heal down. And 
as long as you can keep, you know, your front toward the bad guys, they do quite well. 70 kills. That was a mistake, didn't mean to do that. Misclicked. And I'm back into position. Good combination of mobility and, and uh, staying power, especially with 14,000 health. I toyed about, uh, right there, I toyed about uh, like charging him and, and then knocking him down and getting the unit to kill him, but they're not, they don't have cover me, so it's very difficult to, to, to do that with a non-cover me unit. I mean, you can, like I do it with paladins all the time, but, but I, I, you know, I would put my, I would set myself up for a charge from from the, the siege tower and I'm kind of hoping that this great head garrison guy comes down because I want to I want to go mono a mono with him but uh, and so I, I kind of push my myself out there to give him the idea but he doesn't do it I am taking damage from that uh, from that archer, but I, I know that going out there would be a bad idea, so I kind of have to take it. So the palace guard comes up, so I okay, my my rear is my rear secure, so I come back over here. Because most of the enemy is over here now, I'm going to try and, and, and hold this area. And I come over to the left to keep my uh, my flank secure, and I figured the, the iron cap shield will keep my right secure. And then I push up a little bit, and I side to charge. And I do that because, again, I'm trying to flex out. And then I go into the, 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 the uh, tight defensive formation and just watch the, the kill numbers come up, right? And I know that the, that the I know that the uh, the match is ending, so I, I kind of want to get in there and get more kills. Yeah, and, I, and I saw that guy dying, so I charged out just to get in with the extra kill. There it is. That's the end of it. As you can see, I, I did pretty decent with the uh, with the amount of kills I got there. So now, here's some Iron Reaper action, and you can see again they're super slow. They are super slow, but they did manage to cap the point, so they got another two minutes. So I thought, well, I got to get these guys in. Uh, some place where they can just um, sit and, and do a frontal charge because uh, they, they just don't, like I said, they, they don't flank very well. So as I come around this corner, I see these, these paladins. And the paladins elect to retreat as I come up. They elect to, to, to run away. From the big mass coming up, so I figure I'm going to charge in anyway because I just want to. I want to see how they do it on the unit to unit phase. And he makes that mistake. Look at them. He he told them to attack instead of charging, or or instead of pushing his men forward. He just he doesn't come in, and that allows this guy to get down and, and do the advance. But if he had actually like put a formation uh, move order on top of the melee, they wouldn't have like am ambled in, they would have pushed it. And then you, at that point, you you hit the, the attack command and and they, they begin to attack. And so we win. And you can see that the... Um, well, I wasn't. I was second, but I wasn't first. But you can see that that when I show the uh, the unit stats here, 
Uh, the the gray haired garrison is almost five to one, kill death, and even the iron reapers are like the battle's ending. I'm just throwing them in to get kills, two to one. So, um, that that's 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 pretty much all I've got to say about iron reapers and and uh, uh, gray haired garrison. And so now I'm going to look at at uh, the paladins. So let's take a look at those. So in the tradition of uh, this video, here's my first loss. And and this is a, a, an example of where I thought I had time and I did not. Look at all the archers up there. I want to point all the archers out first. And uh, it's a full paladin unit. They got a little bit of damage, but they're doing all right. So what we're going to see is we're going to see some cudgel monks coming up forward. And I'm like, I can take those guys out. So I go and I hit them. And I do. I take them out. So here they come. So I'm like, oh, I'll just I'll wreck these guys right now. Charge. Nightly vows. In I go. Use my own clash of shields. Look at the bodies fall. And I turn around. I'm going, okay, I'm going to get back. I'm going to go. But watch the damage. Look at the damage go down. That's the that's the arrows, just wrecking them. So I foolishly go back in, and now a watch is hitting me. Fire arrows hitting me. I try to get out, but that is definitely like mistake one. You if you're going in, if you're going to charge, you got to you got to you got to you got to bring it home. You got to you got to stay in, and if you think you 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 can get in and out. Don't forget that, the, that that you'll take range damage like you wouldn't believe. Right? So here's loss number two. Where I screw up royally. So I'm going to come around this corner. And I'm. Uh, what you're going to see is I'm, I'm going to make a bad decision. So I figure I'm going to push forward. And then I'm going to look to my left, and I'm going to, and I, oh, I get off the horse. There's a reason that when I'm in tight like this, I automatically take, get off the horse so I can use my nightly vows. So I'm going to go and charge into this this thing ahead of us. And then I turn to my left, and I see, oh, they're taking that point. So I better get over there. So I get over here, and I'm going to try and charge these these um, berserkers. But just like the just like the gray hair garrison when I did this, and this is actually the same match, uh, I I charge too soon. And then this guy gets in behind them, knocks him down, but he did a lot of damage. And the Berserkers come back in. And I'm out of position. Uh, I'm getting wrecked by three heroes. I kill one. I think, do I kill the other one? I don't think so. But ultimately, I lost the whole unit. Because I looked away for one second and left them sitting by themselves. And a hero came in, and that was the end of it. So here is where I start to, I want to show you some, I'm doing a right play. And charge. Nightly vows, and I'm in. Throw the heal down. And it looks like I'm screwed, because look at the, look at the heroes there. But you can't get to my, you can't get to my rear. I'm, where I'm sitting, you cannot get to my rear. So I keep pushing forward. And you gotta keep pushing forward. I can't turn around. If I turn around, I'm gonna get screwed. So I gotta keep pushing forward. So I follow this men at arms guys up. And he's gonna charge. I'm gonna give him my knightly vows and let him. He's gonna hit. It's gonna be like a one two punch. So he goes to charge. I'm like, I can do that. So he charges. I give him the benefit of my, my uh, Knight of Isles, and then I charge. And again, it's in it to win it. And I'm dropping the formation on top of the, the enemy players so I can kill them. I don't have cover me, so that's what I have to do. And so you hear him scream, attack at will, attack at will. So that's me after I drop the formation so that they push forward. Uh, once I get enough bots into where I want them to be, I'll hit that, that, that uh, I tell them to attack. And you're going to see even better examples of this than, than this one. So now I've decided i got to get out. 
I got a chance to get out, so I'm going to get out. My charge is up, so I may as well use it. And again, I tell them to push forward, then attack. And if you can surround a player with bots, he can't, he can't move. As, you, as I'm sure you know, he can't really move. Right? So you just surround him with bots and tell him to attack. So I send him back to the to the heal point. Now let's look at example number two. So again, I'm just I'm trying not to get too deep in because once I'm in, I'm done. Right? I can't I can't get out unless I win. So I'm just sort of hanging on the point and waiting. And I see those guys to my left, so I'm aware of them. So I come I come back I pull back a bit. Then I push in to get this guy. Again, I'm trying to do this quick enough that I can get in and out, right? He runs away. I chase him, but I see these other heroes, so I stop. And I, and again, I, I, I try to not to get my back done. But I can charge in. I can charge in. I hit the, the iron sides. And I keep pushing forward, right? you, you got to keep pushing forward. There's no, there's no getting out now. And I, I really thought hard about whether I was going to put iron sides on this unit or one that didn't quite have a, a, as much uh, armor. And I eventually I did choose this unit strictly because of uh, the big gaping hole on their backside. And you'll notice again, I, I don't have cover me, but I put the, the formation on top of the hero. And once enough of them had, had filtered in, I told them to attack. So I just I moved out. Uh, from that point, I'm now I'm looking at um, the A point, and it's also uh, really necessary to know your terrain. And I and I'm looking, and I know I've got these uh, these fence lines, so I know that uh, when the time comes and it's going to come, I can hide behind them, right? So I don't want to sit right on the point. I want to get behind this fence line. I want to do that because I want to avoid any cab charges. And that paladin guy just sits there and takes it. That other paladin guy. And you'll notice he's just slow walking his guys forward. Like it's it's real quick to see it, but that's what he's doing. And that's he should be like putting the formation on top of the the guys and and uh, hitting him that way. Whereas I pulled out, went in, charged, and took the, the halberd in the butt. And again, it's in it to win it. You gotta you gotta stay in the fight until it's done. Look how few paladins he's got left. Now again, I'm going behind the fence line because I don't want to sit right on the point. Oh, except when I see this guy, I'm like, oh, no, you're not going to cap it. Like I said, I don't really generally want to sit on the point right where I am because of the that wide open zone that I'm looking at where a cav unit can get me, right? So I kind of want to be a little bit off the point. But I do see these guys coming in, and I thought, well, I better hit them. So that's what I do. And he moves. So I stop my charge, and I do that because I again I don't want to I don't want to bring my backside out, and I see that cav coming. So again I I move where they can't charge me. Now I just noticed that there are rattans, so I'm not too worried anymore because I saw the 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 rattan fire coming in. But again I don't want to push myself out there too much. I want to stay where I I can I can uh, duck back into cover if I need to. Now this guy. He's going to charge in, and I'm going to flank him. I'm going to come right up behind him, and I'm going to hit him. And that's it for him. Now, a, a Pavis unit came in behind me. So I am kind of trying to, 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 to stay in between him and, and them.
And I'm definitely not trying to turn my back to the rattan so they get those that extra damage as they're shooting at me. So I try to back away. And the reason I'm, like I said, the reason I'm staying in the circle right now instead of moving to where I'm cav safe is because of the, the, the pavis behind me. I'm trying to protect them. Charge this guy. And I'm going to use Clash of Shields here. At least I thought I did. No, no, I guess I'm not going to use Clash of Shields here. Usually, usually what I do when I charge a, a wall like this is I use Clash of Shields immediately. Just to, to knock the wall down enough for my guys to get in. So I... So usually I would have used classic shields there. And I'm going for the... I'm going for those guys, but, you know, we win. And I was MVP, only A+, plus, but, you know, so everyone else sucked worse than me. But, I mean, you can see that, like, I played Paladins the, the whole run. And uh, as long as I, I was very cognizant to not put myself in a situation where my back was to the enemy I could I could get in I could I could be in it to win it and win the fight right and and a lot of it is is uh, is is taking down the heroes and, and dropping the formation on top of that hero and and that's what I tend to do is I'll, I'll use the paladins that way now um, in my men at arms videos, like someone had mentioned that he he saw, saw it and thought, oh, you know, I've always had I've always found paladins too clunky, and and I'm I'm glad you showed me the men at arms attack build because you know I, I went back to using them and I, I like them and I, and I agree, you know, they're a good unit. But so are paladins. You can play paladins exactly like you play men at arms, right up until point of contact. You can flank. You can you can you can be quick. Uh, and they've got those tight, tight, tight formations that allow you to maneuver really well. The only difference is that once, once you're in, it's almost impossible to get out. So when you, when you do make your hit, you have to, to say to yourself, I am most likely going to either win or die here, right? Because every time you go to pull out, if you haven't won, you're probably going to die anyway. So if you see yourself in a situation where you thought, oh, I should get out of here, I'm going to get fucked, uh, the reality of it is is you're probably, you know, anyway. So you may as well just stay in it to win it in that case. Like, because every time I try, I've tried to pull out, when before I've won the fight, you, you're just going to get creamed. Uh, so anyway, uh, that's, the, uh, that's the heavy uh, infantry video, the in it to win it video. Now, I do have another video that shows the foot cav, and that's coming up. But you've pretty much when I when I showed how the paladins and the garrison play is that's pretty much the foot calf style. The difference is what are the units, right? Um, because even though there are heavy infantry units that can be foot calf, there are no pure foot calf units that can be heavy infantry. It just doesn't work that way. Uh, so we're gonna we're gonna look at those in my next video. And so I want to thank you for staying here for like over freaking 47 minutes 50 minutes that this video is and uh please hit that like and subscribe and i'll see you in part two mm -hmm.